how will you make the diagnosis children less than 5 years of age making a diagnosis according to gina guidelines as well as if you read nelson it is challenging in this age group why first of all the symptoms can often be variable even in non asthmatic children so variability of clinical symptoms will not be a very accurate clue in this population they can have intermittent wheezing intermittent shortness of breath without being asthmatic also second problem which is a practical problem spirometry is not possible young child less than 5 years you will not be able to do spirometry it is not possible it is not available its reliability is not there the guidelines the cutoffs have not been defined even if you are somehow able to do it so it is challenging because of these two reasons so according to the gina guidelines the diagnosis in this age group is based upon a spectrum of following the maximum you can do first thing is respiratory symptoms they should preferably be intermittent or episodic so symptoms should be there plus there should be some risk factor risk factor may be in the form of uh, either family history of asthma like first degree relative having asthma or allergies or the patient himself the child himself should be having some degree of atopic dermatitis like eczema or allergic rhinitis or food allergies etc right third therapeutic response to control and medication so we will give a trial basis of salbutamol or these inhaled agents and we will see whether the patient has improvement on symptoms or not so retrospectively also you need to make the diagnosis and fourth you should exclude all the alternate diagnosis like any foreign body any obstruction uh, sometimes uh, certain viral infections can produce wheezing without the patient himself being asthmatic so all these uh, reversible causes or alternate causes need to be ruled out so it is less of a spirometry based uh, thing more of a clinical history examination and therapeutic trial based diagnosis that we make in these children so these four points you need to remember so uh, the guidelines also talk about what are the features when you will be talking about when you should be taking history and examination so when you are talking about cough you should ask about a recurrent or persistent non productive cough that may be worse at night or accompanied by wheezing and breathing difficulties you should ask about cough occurring with exercise laughing crying exposure to tobacco smoke particularly in the absence of an apparent absence of an ap apparent respiratory infection so if the patient is having coughing with some precipitating stimulus without infection or coughing associated with wheezing or breathing difficulty should be the cough that you should make you suspect can it be asthma second is wheezing recurrent wheezing should be there during sleep or with triggers as we just discussed third should be difficulty or heavy breathing or shortness of breath occurring with some trigger episode reduced activity like children uh, the child the child's daily activity the child's uh, normal movement normal playful activity should be restricted by this uh, set of symptoms past or family history of these allergies and asthmas and therapeutic trial clinical improvement during 2 to 3 months of controller therapy and worsening when treatment is stopped parents would give the history that uh, we went to that doctor we went to that hospital we were advised nebulization or we were advised uh, you know spacer based therapies for this for this child when he was taking he was fine but whenever we have stopped the medication now the symptoms have again recurred again it will be a point in favor of asthma in the child so these are the alternative things which you need to remember when you try to make the diagnosis